Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. We are back again with some scalding hot gossip fresh off the Windsor Castle grounds. This one's sure to get those blood pressures boiling amongst a certain former cable actress and her husband out in Montecito. We're talking raging jealousy, tantrum throwing the whole nine yards of unhinged drama. But before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss the explosive content we have in store. So now, word on the royal rumor mill is that King Charles is cooking up a big, symbolic family moment for his first Trooping the Color celebration as monarch. You know, that hugely anticipated annual parade where the entire royal cavalry gets decked out in their sickest regalia to honor the sovereign's birthday with fanfare galore. Well, according to veteran royal watcher Marlene Cohen, Charlie Boy is planning on a major promotional event for the next generation of Windsor's front and center, his beloved grandkids, Prince Georgie, Princess Charlotte, and young Prince Louis. That's right. Those fresh-faced munchkins who, along with the parents Wills and Kate, are the photogenic future of the whole monarchy. In Cohen's own dreamy words, she envisions the carriage will include the king and queen and their three grandchildren, waving gaily to adoring crowds. Just an iconic, postcard-perfect vision of the modern royals staying humble and accessible for the public masses. You can practically see Kate snapping those pride-swelling iPhone snaps from the sidelines as a dotting mum. For any other family, such a heartwarming decision to spotlight the next two heirs after Prince William would be a total non-issue. Just another moment of ceremonial bonding helping reinforce those all-important hereditary ties to the crown for George, Charlotte, and Louis from an early age. A chance for the adoring UK public to bask in these treasured youths before they grow into ceremonial figureheads of the future Commonwealth. But this is the royals we're talking about, which means even the most benign developments get twisted into rotten Machiavellian subplots rife with scandal and scores setting. Especially when you factor the Montecito meddlers, Meghan and Harry, doing everything in their power to constantly disrupt or discredit any royal actions as part of a vindicative anti-monarchy agenda. In fact, let's not mince words here. The mere idea of Charles purposefully elevating his direct heirs, adorable tots for mass public consumption during his first major celebration as king. You already know Meghan Markle is practically detonating the $14 million Montecito compound she kleptomaniac on the mere suggestion alone. After all her insincere efforts to play globetrotting humanitarian and perpetual voice for the voiceless over the past three years, here's living proof the monarchy already moved on without her. Not only are George, Charlotte, and Louis the undisputed stars of this generational royal roadshow, but their own children, Archie and Lilibet, are nowhere to be found in the King's Bing plans. Out of sight, out of mind for renegade Granny and Auntie Meg. I can already envision the plate-smashing tantrums and red-misted social media rants Meghan surely launched upon getting wind of these cruel, trooping the color snubs, wailing about how Charles needs to show the world that my beautiful, ethnically diverse grandchildren are the real face of the monarchy moving forward. The narcissistic audacity would be appalling if it wasn't so predictable from the seasoned pro-grifter by now. Remember, this is the same jealousy-fueled manipulator who spearheaded that whole disastrous Oprah interview simply because Kate Middleton got better media coverage during her own pregnancy than Meghan did. A multi-million dollar televised airing of personal grievances because Mean Lady didn't get more glossy spread photo shoots to celebrate her own blessed event with little Archie. Yikes. This woman has clung so desperately to her falsely self-anointed role as the racial equality trailblazer, shaking up the outdated royal's musty traditions. Archie and Lilibet were never just her kids in the traditional nuclear sense. They've always been hand-sculpted cultural symbols and battering rams to further Meghan's never-ending crusade against the firm's ancient gatekeepers, too. All those breathless claims that the reclusive youngsters were being denied proper titles and security privileges from their cruel racist royal family, those were the opening salvo seeds she used to plant her and Harry's martyr narrative without liberating the monarchy through modernization. Following Meghan's manifesto, those two tykes' diverse complexions and very existences were supposed to become international ambassadors for making the Windsors atone for past wrongs. So, to see Papa Charles overly upstaging Archie and Lilibet by thrusting those more photogenic, traditionally Anglo-Saxon Wales grandchildren into the global limelight instead? For Meghan, that's the ultimate retaliation. 
she sacrificed her entire relationship with the royal family under the pretense of finally giving it a more progressive, equitable, public-facing rebrand. Only for the new regime to pivot violently back towards elevating the same old stodgy, white, nepotistic branding they've always favored. For someone as toxically self-absorbed and grievance hoarding as Meghan, this latest PR maneuver has to feel doubly humiliating. Not only are her own kids getting frozen out of the revered spotlight by their more respectable young cousins, but it's happening under the reign of their own feuding grandfather Charles, the same monarch who she and Harry gleefully dragged for failing parenting through their Oprah saga and beyond. Meg and Harry publicly aired him out as the absentee father who carried on the same toxic cycles of emotional neglect he suffered under the Queen's admittedly antiquated child-rearing practices. But now he's the one being portrayed as the dotting, relatable granddad happily ushering in a few new generations of heirs to spoil and revel in. While ignoring his own son's brood on the other side of the Atlantic, that insult is glaring. At this point, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Meghan staged her own tawdry public stunts to deliberately undermine any chooping glow Charles hopes to bask in next month. You know this perpetually oppressed duchess has zero qualms anymore about weaponizing her innocent kids as shiny new victims against the dastardly royal establishment. Facts and content be damned. Maybe she'll orchestrate some weepy public outing where baby Lilibet and Archie are honored by pesky paparazzi while their absent grandfather gallivants around playing dotting papa to George and siblings. Or contrive some phony balcony snub controversy pushing a false narrative that Charles purposefully banished his Cali-based grandchildren from the festivities over their racial backgrounds. Anything to steal the spotlight back over her bottomless well of perceived injustice. It would just be the latest chapter in what's become Meghan's defining mission as an aristocratic Aravist, endlessly muckracking the royal family no matter how much it costs them dignity, privacy, or unity. Because let's be honest, she was always going to find new excuses to stir the racist pot against her in-laws if it meant generating fresh PR cycles to cynically monetize. Megan learned from her disastrous archetype's disaster that the rest of the world is overhearing about her own personal grievances against the firm. But if she can redirect all that controversy onto Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and little Prince Louis instead, turn their innocent involvement into a timeless royal celebration, into some racially charged controversy about the monarchy excluding her diverse kiddos? Well, now we've got the perfect recipe for Meghan to cast herself as the ultimate progressive mama bear, defending her maligned cubs against bigoted colonizers. In it, controversy sold. Personally, I don't even think she'd feel an ounce of guilt over exploiting such innocent family members like that anymore. Meghan's proven she'll readily use Harry himself as collateral damage in her all-consuming ambition. The Duke of Domesticated has become little more than disposable stage prop, undermined and emasculated at every possible turn by his camera-hogging bride until he's little more than a stammering shell without her. So what do you guys think about it? Please share your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you think. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.